Hello, welcome back to this follow-up session on spine leaf architectures. In this session we will be setting up VTAP termination on the leaf devices based on VXLAN. VXLAN is a protocol that is more and more being deployed in data center environments. For example, VMware NSX uses VXLAN to provide layer 2 termination. The main advantage of using this technology is, is that it can run on any layer 3 architecture. In this case, we will be demonstrating VXLAN functionality operating on a spine leaf architecture that operates on BGP equal cost multipath routing. One of the advantages of using BGP eCMP is, is that the solution provides load balancing functionality. You can click on the link in this video to check out the BGP setup. The diagram shows the underlay network based on BGP. Each leaf operates on a separate autonomous system that pierced with the spine switches that are operating in a common autonomous system. On top of the VGP infrastructure, we will be configuring VXLAN, as shown in the diagram. We will be connecting all the leaves together, allowing the hosts on each leaf to communicate with each other on layer 2. On each leaf, two tunnel interfaces will be created that connect to the other two leaves. The configuration of VXLAN only has to take place on the leaves. There are no configuration requirements on the spine switches, which greatly simplifies the configuration. The configuration consists of four simple steps. First step is to enable layer 2 VPN functionality on the leaves. Then we're going to create VXLAN tunnel interfaces. The third step is to create a virtual service instance and bind the tunnel interfaces to that service instance and then finally bind the virtual service instance to the physical interface. Let's start by verifying the configuration. BGP is already configured and up and running. The first step is to enable layer 2 VPN functionality on the leaf. So let's do this. The second step is to create tunnel interfaces on each leaf connecting to the other leaves. This means that in this case we have to configure two tunnels per leaf. Each tunnel will point to the loopback interface of the other leaf. The reason for using loopback interfaces is that if we would point to a physical interface and that physical interface goes down, the tunnel will also go down. Because we have a spine leaf architecture with multiple paths, if we use a loopback as source and destination, in case of a failure, the tunnel will stay up.
The third step is configuring the virtual switch interface. The VSI is like the glue between the tunnel interface and the physical interface. In the VSI we will be configuring the VXLAN virtual network identifier, the VNI, and attach both tunnel interfaces to the VSIs. We have to do this on all the leaves. The final step is to attach the VSI to the physical interface. This is done on a routed interface by using the xconnect command. As soon as the xconnect command is executed, the VTAP is established. This concludes the configuration. Let's check the configuration and see whether the VTAPs are up and running. Now let's see if the end hosts can communicate with each other. And also let's see if this is really operating on VXLAN by removing one of the X connects on one of the leaves. As you can see, the uh, Ubuntu host that is connected to Leaf 3 is now stalling. So let's put back the XConnect again. And the VTAP is re-established. And finally, let's have a look at the packet traces to see which paths the traffic takes. We will take leaf 1 and check what traffic is taking the route through spine 1 and what traffic is taking the route through spine 2. In the diagram you can see that we have to start a packet trace on adapter hash 1 and a packet trace on adapter hash 2.
As you can see, the traffic is load balanced based on sessions. So this concludes the demonstration on VXLAN. Thanks for watching.